the FNM. Stellar date 01.07.8942. Adjusted years. Location, Farthingway Airstrip, Ludo. Region, Nottingham System, Genevian Federation. Here she comes. The words came directly into Rika's mind. Sent from her team leader, Silva, who stood a few meters away, cleaning the multifunction barrel of her main weapon, the GNR-41B. Rika didn't need to look in Silva's direction to know what the corporal was up to. Her helmet, a featureless ovoid, fed a 360 view of her surroundings into her mind, tapping into specialized mods and the upgraded optics processing center in her brain. In the same way, she could also see the approaching mech that Silva had referred to. Looks green, Rika commented, shifting her stance and resisting the urge to cross her arms, a habit she was trying to break herself of. Not that there was any reg in the Genevian armed forces against crossing one's arms. It was just difficult to do when your left arm ended in the meter-long barrel of a GNR. She is green, Silva replied. I bet her paint is still wet. We're not painted. Rika glanced down at her armored body. Well, I guess we sort of are, but it's a specialized graphene composite. Silva snorted. <laughs> Look at you, all smart and fancy. Someone has to make up for kit. Rika stopped herself from finishing her standard rejoinder. Had she completed the words, they would have been Kelly's idiocy. But Kelly was dead all but torn in half by a Nietzschean rocket that had hit her moments before they reached the dropship back on the era. That fateful night, which had seen the women of Team Hammerfall fighting through the streets of Denmark City, was a month in their past, but it still felt like just a few nights ago to Rika. It's okay, Silva said, as she rose and stretched out her long armored arms. Kelly's extra stupid now that she's dead but maybe she's up in some sort of special heaven for prostitutes that got turned into mech soldiers for the GAF. Rika chuckled at the thought. <laughs> Guzzling spunk all the live long day. Stars, Rika, that's a nasty image. I guess Kelly wore off on you more than I'd thought. Private Vi reporting for duty, the new mech said as she reached the pair of women, stopping her forward motion unsteadily and then saluting Rika. Rika barked a laugh and shook her head, pointing at Silva. She's in charge here, not me. I just point this thing where she tells me. She finished the statement by waving her GNR in the air. Sorry, ma'am, Private Vi said and turned to Silva, repeating the salute. Rika glanced around the airfield, hoping no one saw the gesture. Anyone with more than five minutes in the GAF knew that privates didn't salute corporals, and no one saluted a mech. The meat doesn't deserve respect. Luckily, no one had spotted the gesture, and Rika breathed a sigh of relief. If anyone thought that Silva and Rika were making their FNM salute them, it would be a round of discipline for all. Rika wondered if Vi had earned a taste of the mind-numbing pain the GAF used to keep mechs in line. Usually they gave the FNMs a good taste in transport, so they wouldn't make any trouble at their destinations. You salute me again, and I'll bend that GNR around your scrawny neck. Silva growled at Vi through her armor's speakers. You only salute officers, and there's not a single damn commissioned mech in the entire GAF. You read me? Uh, yes. Sorry, Corporal, Private Vi stammered. It's okay, Silva's tone softened. Just don't let it happen again. If any of the squishies see shit like that, we'll all get to taste a discipline sandwich. You're straight off the factory line, aren't you? Factory? Vi's voice carried a waver, something that wasn't easy to do, given that none of the mechs had mouths anymore. The GAF had taken that feature, along with the mech's arms and legs, and faces and skin, and humanity. It's what we call it, Rika said with a shrug. So far as the GAF is concerned, we were made. We're products with model numbers. 
just like those crates of ammunition over there. They said I'm an SMI-2, V.I. said, raising her three-fingered right hand and bending the fingers slowly, like she was still learning how to use them. Is that a good model? Scout Mech Infantry Mark II, Silva intoned. You, my dear sweet Vi, now represent the pinnacle of Genevian warfare. The best of the best. The tip of the spear. Which means we get bent and bloodied a lot, Rika added. So what did you do? Do? Vi's voice was confused and wavering again. Yeah, Rika gave a sharp nod. What did you steal? Who did you kill? How did they set you up for this shit gig? I volunteered, Vi said with no small amount of regret and sorrow and the semi-mechanical voice that emanated from the speakers on her armor. If it were possible, Rika's jaw would have fallen open, gaping wide enough for the nearby pigeons foraging in the grass to fly into. Silva beat her to the exclamation. You fucking volunteered for this? Vi ducked her head. Well, I didn't know they'd do this to me. They told me that if I volunteered for special service, the government would take care of my mother. She's sick, and we've lost everything running from the Nietzscheans. I signed the documents at a courthouse, and then they loaded me onto a bus. We know the rest of the story. Rika interrupted, taken to the factory, naked, scrubbed, limbs amputated at the elbows and knees, skin stripped off. Vi shuddered and nodded wordlessly. Sounds like the GAF is widening their net, Silva said, as she took a step toward Vi and placed a hand on the mech's shoulder. I know we come across as a pair of hard cases, but that's just from being in the shit for too long. The factory is behind you. You won't ever go back there. Now you're with us, your team Hammerfall. Vi's featureless oval head lifted, still getting accustomed to the fact that she could never look away from anything. No matter what was around you, no matter how horrible it was or how delightful, Mex could never look away. Hammerfall? Yeah, Rika placed a hand on Vi's other shoulder. The three of us. We're Team Hammerfall. We're the baddest daughters of steel in the GAF. And Nietzscheans piss themselves till they're dried husks when they see us coming. Overselling it a bit, Silva said to Rika privately. Well, you got her all scared. Not my fault she's so fragile. Silva's thought trailed off for a moment. Stars, Rika. I have no idea what normal human interactions are like anymore. Probably a bit like this. Silva groaned. Shut up, Rika. So, are you two going to train me? Vi asked. Didn't they run you through the boot sims when they shipped you over here? Rika asked, trying to keep the dear stars you're so fucked sentiment out of her voice. I got racked and shut down for transport. When I landed on the far side of the field, they unracked us right next to the cradle. A sergeant sent me over here to you two. Rika glanced across the field. There were no military transports on any of the cradles. The only thing big enough to ship a bunch of mechs was a squat freighter three kilometers away. You came in on that thing? Vi turned her head to face Rika. Then she dipped it and shook the featureless ovoid side to side. I gotta learn not to do that, she muttered. I can't tell where you're looking by looking at you, and I don't need to turn my head to look anywhere. How do you two deal with it? Your brain will adapt. Takes a few days to even get the hang of it, which is why they usually stick the FNMs into a boot camp sim on the way over. Which I guess didn't happen if they're sending mechs out from the factory on civvy ships now. What does that mean? Vi asked, her voice warbling once again. Rika gave the woman a light punch on the arm. Well, Vi, it means you're the FNMist of the FNMs. Mama Silva and I, I hate it when you call me that, Silva interjected. 
are gonna teach you how to fight like a girl, Rika continued. Vi ducked her head in a nervous nod. What does FNM mean? Rika gave Vi a light knock on the head with the barrel of her GNR. Fucking new mech, Vi. Don't worry, though. Every woman who's come into Hammerfall has lived long enough to call someone else the FNM. Where have they all gone? Vi asked. Did they move to other teams? Silva kicked a rock. Yeah. Her tone was sour, laced with anger and pain. Team Dirt Nap. How many of your team have died? Vi asked quietly. Too many. Silva whispered, turning her body away to look out over the low hills, stretching to the south of the airstrip. Gunny just hit me up over the link. We're gonna take you out on a little dry run, Vi. Make sure all the kinks are worked out. Rika turned to one of the crates nearby. Okay, Vi, I'm gonna show you how to rack and stack your ammo. From now on, you gotta think of yourself as a one-woman tank. You've got the firepower of a whole platoon of squishies. But if you run out of ammo or power, you're just scrap metal. You read me? Uh, yes, Rika. Rika strode over to the first crate and popped it open, pulling out a multifunction rifle. Good, now here's your AR-97. You're not gonna love this thing as much as your gun arm, but you may consider an affair with it from time to time. She handed the gun to Vi, who took it awkwardly and cradled it against her gun arm. I've never fired a weapon before, Rika, V said quietly. Well, not outside of Sims. Neither had I when I joined up with this lovely outfit, but don't worry, I'll get you squared away. There's a latch on your back for it. Silva turned her back to Vi and pointed at hers. Stick the AR-97 on it for now. We'll show you how to use it when we're away from all these eyes. I don't want them thinking mechs don't know their shit. Vi ducked her head and gave a slight nod, following Silva's directions. Stars, Rika, she's meek as a mouse, Silva groused. Then we'll make her into the toughest mouse in the GAF. Home on the Range. Stellar date 01.07.8942. Adjusted years. Location, 10K south of Farthingway Airstrip, Ludo. Region, Nottingham System, Genevian Federation. The crack of Vi's GNR-41B echoed through the hills once again. Rika watched the rock on the hillside two kilometers away to see if this round would hit. It did not. A shower of dirt sprayed out of the ground a meter away from the rock, and Vi groaned with disgust. Damn it, Rika, I just can't seem to deal with the wind drift. It's a bitch. She agreed, half watching Silva as the corporal ambled down the slope into the valley below. It had surprised Rika that the team leader had left her to train Vi alone. Silva had never wandered off like this before. She usually enjoyed target practice. Maybe she's tired of training FNMs just to watch them die a few months later. I don't get why I can't just use the targeting system, Vi complained. It could hit that rock, right? Rika pointed up at the fluffy white clouds drifting overhead. See those cumulus formations, Private? Uh, sure. Imagine that those are dark clouds of smoke, some from airburst explosions, some from ships coming down out of orbit. Now, see that big cloud over there? The one that looks like a tree? Yep, that's a nuke's mushroom cloud. She reached down and picked up a handful of moist, loamy soil, and smeared it across the front of Vi's helmet. You've got a squishy's blood and gut sprayed across you. EM from all the shit is fucking with your scan suite. We're running and gunning. That rock over there is a Nietzschean crew-served weapon that's going to mow Hammerfall down like we're a bunch of fucking bar servitors. If you don't blow a hole in those bastards, we're all eating dirt. So shoot the shit out of them. Vi widened her stance and turned her head to direct a clean side of her helmet toward the rock. She drew in a slow breath and took careful aim. Just before she fired, Rika shoved her in the back and she missed her target again. The woman groaned in frustration and Rika shrugged. Shit happens, Vi, 
again. The FNM turned her head like she was going to say something, but then paused and leveled her GNR. Rika pulled her hand back to push Vi again. But just as she was about to hit the FNM, Vi dropped to a knee, rested the barrel of her GNR across it, and fired. A second later, the rock exploded. Fuck yeah, Vi shouted as she stood and turned to Rika. I was watching you and the rock simultaneously. When I saw you about to hit me again, I just knew what to do. Rika wished she could give the woman a reassuring smile, but gave a thumbs up instead. That was some damn fine shooting, Vi. Now let's see if you can do it 20 more times. Then we'll move on to doing it while you're running. Running? That's impossible. Rika grabbed a cloth from the top of the ammo crate they'd brought with them and wiped down Vi's helmet. Pay attention, Vi. She took off at a light jog along the hillside, which for an SMI-2 was a sedate 20 kilometers per hour. She held out her GNR-41B at 90 degrees from her direction of travel and chose a series of red-tinged rocks on the far hillside. Two shots and two rocks exploded. She unfolded the second hinge in her legs and picked up the pace, hitting 70 kilometers per hour. Two more rocks met their end. Then Rika turned back the way she'd come and poured on her full speed, holding her GNR across her chest as her HUD registered a speed of 115 kilometers per hour. She fired again, and one shot missed, but one struck true. She fired a third time and took out the first rock. Slowing to an easy lope, she circled back around to Vi. Holy shit, Rika, how? Practice, Vi. You just have to practice. That was without my automated targeting systems on as well. If they had been, that one rock wouldn't have seen a miss. Granted, in combat, the targets move and shoot back, but you can see what's possible. We're in this together, though. It's not a competition. Still, I don't think I can do that, Vi said with a shake of her head. Rika reached out and grasped the meter-long barrel of the GNR-41B that was the end of Vi's left arm. What's this feel like? Uh, nothing? You sure? Rika asked, wondering if maybe Vi's gun arm wasn't properly integrated with her neurological systems. Well, I guess I can kind of feel it. When I touch the barrel of my GNR, it feels like when I used to tap a fingernail on a solid surface. I can't feel the fingernail, but I can feel with what it's attached to. Think of the GNR like it's your index finger, Vi. It's not a gun that you've got attached to the stubby remains of your left arm. It is your left arm. You have to train your mind to think that way. Do you always leave this arm on? Vi asked. Do they let us put a regular arm in its place when we're not in combat? Rika laughed and shook her head. Vi, we're always in combat. Besides, you need that weapon to be a part of your body. It doesn't come off till you can do what I just did. But I want to feel human again, Rika. I thought that when we're alone, we follow orders, Vi. We follow orders and we keep at the top of our game to stay alive. So far as we know, there's only one way out of this war. Through winning? She asked, hopefully. Winning? Fucked if that ever happens. No, through death. Haven't you been paying attention? Through the afternoon, Rika continued to teach Vi about her weapon systems, what her improved body was capable of, and how to work as a team in combat. The woman was by no means proficient, but she had promise. At the very least, she took advice and feedback without complaint and argument. Though Rika saw it more with the squishies, she'd seen a number of mechs behave like they were skilled warriors just because they had armor for skin. Rika knew all too well that armor only helped so much. By the time the knot, what the locals called their day star, began to set over the northeastern horizon, Vi had become mildly proficient with her GNR's projectile firing mode, and Rika was considering letting her try out the electron beam. Silva had recently reappeared over a hilltop to the west, briefly visible in the dimming light until she topped the crest and was lost in the valley's gloom. Rika, Silva called out to her, 
Some shit's going down upstairs. No one's telling us anything, as per usual. But it smells like the neats have come calling. Damn it. I thought the fleet had them bottled up out near Gregoria Station. Yeah, well, no one's panicking too much. So maybe they just snuck a ship or two further in system. Either way, pack it up with Goldilocks there so we can get back to the airstrip. Goldilocks? Rika asked with a laugh. Vi's just too bright and bubbly for a person who volunteered to have their limbs hacked off. Are you sure you have your ancient lore right? I thought Goldilocks was the whiny one that couldn't be pleased with anything. Hmm. Silva paused for a moment. You might be right. The character's golden hair always throws me off. Besides, Vi is terrified and adrift, and she's killing herself to please us so she can fit in somewhere. Rika's tone held more accusation than she intended. But she couldn't help but remember how lost and alone she'd felt when Hammerfall had taken her in. Silva and Kelly had treated her like family, and that had saved her. Why Silva wasn't giving Vi that same welcome didn't make sense to Rika. I mean, I was a replacement for a sister they'd lost then, too. Kelly was the first, Rika, Silva said apparently picking up on Rika's train of thought. She was the first wayward sister to join Hammerfall. Rika knew that all too well. Kelly had often thrown her seniority in Rika's face. Most of the time it was playful, sometimes less so. Don't give up, she whispered to Silva. The corporal didn't reply, but Rika could see the woman's shoulders slump as she picked her way across the valley floor. Rika was trying to think of something else to say to her team lead when she saw a heat bloom just 10 meters behind the SMI-2. For a moment, Rika thought it was just an animal, perhaps a rabbit or a muskrat that had come out of a hole. No, Silva's not in stealth, and she's not walking softly. No animal comes out of hiding that close to a mech. Silva, I saw it too. I think it was a leg. A brush against a shrub could cause a momentary stealth failure like that. Vi, Rika turned to the mech next to her. Load up your GNR with rounds, DPU and projectile. We're going to have one last hurrah before we go back to the airstrip. Vi nodded and turned to the ammo crate, opening up a box of the depleted uranium sabot rounds and feeding them into her gun arm's weapon mount. Rika stepped up next to her, and yanked a belt-fed ammo box out of the crate, clipping it onto her hip before she fed the starter tab into her gun arm. Her weapon was already filled with the uranium sabot rounds. She didn't go anywhere without a full mag of DPUs. What's our target? Vi asked, trying to sound casual, as though today wasn't the first time she'd ever fired a weapon. We're going to hit that hillside on the right, Rika directed. Vi twisted her body in the direction her teammate had pointed. Won't we be firing over Silva's head? Gonna scare the shit out of her, too, she said with a laugh and a nod. Just don't hit her. She'll be pissed. Vi made a strange gulping sound and then ducked her head. Got it. Rika felt a sense of pride that this woman, who had barely known which way to feed a bullet into a clip at the beginning of the day, wasn't going to back down from the challenge. Oh, Vi? Yeah? Turn on your targeting systems. Rika picked out a few rocks on the far hillside, barely visible in the deepening gloom, and directed Vi to hit them in rapid succession with projectile rounds while she watched Silva, waiting for any further sign that the stealthed enemy was tailing the corporal. She was beginning to think that what she'd seen before must have been nothing more than an especially dumb animal when she spotted the heat bloom again, this time higher off the ground and only three meters behind Silva. Without a second thought, Rika fired a DPU at the target. The sabot burst from the muzzle of her GNR and then its propellant lit, flaring brightly as it sped across the valley. Less than a second later, the bolt of uranium hit a solid object behind Silva, and a kinetic explosion boomed across the valley floor. Contact, 
Rika cried out over the auto-established combat net. Vi, get behind that rock over there. I'm gonna feed you target. What? Do it. Rika moved to another one of the large boulders that dotted the hillside. Before she'd reached cover, a shot hit the ground next to her, and she traced its origin, responding with a series of projectile rounds sent in the general vicinity of the new shooter. In the valley below, Silva was running backwards, firing projectile rounds at the figure Rika had hit. Most of the attacker was still in stealth, but there was a telltale patch of scorched armor hovering above the ground. Silva's rounds only ricocheted off the mostly stealthed enemy. The enemy was still too close for another DPU shot, and an electron beam's discharge might damage her as well. Muzzle flash appeared in front of the armored figure, and Silva dove to the side, taking advantage of the dubious cover offered by a low slab of rock and firing her own rounds in response. Vi, target on your HUD. Hit it with sabots, Rika called out. Both the SMI-2s on the hillside fired in unison. Rika hit the same spot on the attacker as her first shot, and Vice hit a little higher. Then the enemy's torso, or what she suspected to be their torso, exploded. You hit? Rika called down to Silva. Fucker shredded my right arm. Good thing that's not the one your GNR is on. We'll cover you. Get back up here. Weapons fire rang out from the far side of the hill, some striking around Rika and Vi's positions, some splashing off the rock that Silva was lying in the lee of. Okay, on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Silva was up and sprinting as she said the last word, and Rika fired shots and fed targets to Vi as fast as she could. She wasn't certain if they took out any enemies, but they kept the neats pinned well enough that Silva only took a few hits, which her armor managed to shed. Thirty seconds later, Silva dove behind a large boulder twenty meters down the slope and leaned back against it, chest heaving. Rika was about to ask the corporal if she'd called the attack in, when a general announcement came over the platoon-wide combat net. Okay, assholes, the neats think they can take this patch of dirt from us, but that's not happening on my watch. Lieutenant Bailey announced. Silva, keep your meat out there to the south. I want that flank secure. Gunny, if you think they need another squad, send it over. But I want first squad on the western flank, and another one to hold the airstrip. I'll move third and fourth to the north, Gunny replied. Silva and her girls can hold the south side. But let me know if you get in Huck out there, Mick. Understood. Silva's voice came over the platoon's net. Aren't we in Huck now? Vi asked Rika directly. We're pinned down out here. Nonsense, Rika replied as she released six scouting drones from her left arm and sent them above the battlefield. From what I see, there can't be more than 40 neats across the valley. That's what Silva and I call a warm-up. Good first engagement for you, too. Seriously? Vi's voice carried a note of fear. Hey, you're the one that signed up for this. Welcome to the shit. Meet the mechs. Stellar date 01.07.8942. Adjusted years. Location 10K south of Farthingway Airstrip, Ludow. Region Nottingham System, Genevian Federation. Silva had worked her way up to Rika and Vi's position and was availing herself of the ammo crate after pulling it behind another of the large boulders. Once the corporal was restocked, Rika moved to Silva's position and pulled the woman's AR-104 off her back and set it into an auxiliary mount on her right forearm. The socket was a bit twisted, and Rika lashed a cargo strap around the weapon to hold it secure. Then she gave Silva a knock on the head to signal that she was all set. <laughs> hands? Rika laughed. <laughs> Who needs stinking hands? Funny, Private. Vi and I will hold the hill here. You move down to the west. See if you can get behind these assholes. On it, Corporal. Rika turned to move away, but then paused. Be nice to Vi, Silva. She's trying really hard. I'm always nice, the leader grunted. Now go. Rika activated her armor stealth and slipped around the edge of the boulder. She moved through the grass and scrub on the hill with great care. 
Her goal was to crest the hill behind her team before moving west to flank the enemy. She'd considered moving straight down the valley they were in, but her drones had picked up some movement on the far side of the ridge behind the trio of SMI-2s, and she wanted to be sure it was just wildlife, much of which was actively fleeing the area before she moved on. Cresting the hill was tricky because the passage would silhouette her against the setting sun to the northeast. In theory, her stealth system should keep her masked, but she didn't really like testing their effectiveness when she didn't have to. Instead, she angled toward a depression in the ridgeline that would let her cross without undue risk. It took her two minutes to reach it, and one more to traverse its boulder-strewn slopes to the far side of the ridge. Rika released another pair of drones to fly close overhead. Her initial set were now a kilometer up, surveilling the entire battlefield. She paid a sliver of attention to Vi and Silva's chatter, the latter barking orders to the former. Vi sounded cowed, but was still responding and taking shots. Rika saw the FNM's estimated kill count begin to climb on the combat net and could hear a measure of respect growing in Silva's voice. The girl must have played a lot more shooting sims than she let on, Rika thought as she picked up the pace, her drones in personal scan not detecting any enemy activity on the north side of the ridge. How are you two doing? Rika asked Silva as she passed the one kilometer mark. Good, but the neats aren't advancing. It's like they're just doing the bare minimum to hold us here. I'm faking two mechs worth of fire as much as I can, but I think you need to look out. By some serendipitous sinister chance, at the exact moment Silva said, look out, weapons fire poured down on Rika. She was in a clear space with a few boulders nearby, an ideal spot for an ambush, now that she paid closer attention to her surroundings. Fuck, pay attention to what you're doing, Rika. Her HUD flagged a half dozen shooters, and she cast about for nearby cover. The north side of the ridge didn't have nearly as many boulders as the southern face, and she felt a momentary flare of panic. The quick survey had revealed that all the available cover was already occupied by neats. Not for long, fuckers. As projectile rounds ricocheted off her body, Rika took a running leap through the air, screaming as she flew. Her target was a large boulder, behind which a Nietzschean crouched. His rifle lifted to track her as Rika sailed through the air, but she was already firing. A stream of relativistic electrons poured from the end of her GNR, Cherenkov radiation glowing around the beam and the point of impact, the man's face shield. Surprisingly, his armor managed to bear the blast. Rika followed up with a trio of projectile rounds, which ended up being enough to blow the enemy's head to smithereens. She landed and rolled back to her feet, pressing herself behind the rock to find that there had been more than one Nietzschean taking cover behind it. Shit, their stealth tech has gotten way better. The woman fired her rifle at Rika, the weapon's full auto rounds tracing a line at Rika's chest. She barely noticed her HUD alerting that her armor's ablative systems were compromised before she reached out and grabbed the barrel of the Nietzsche rifle, ripping the weapon from the woman's hand. The enemy reached for a sidearm, but Rika swung a leg up and clamped her three-toed foot around the Nietzschean's face, squeezing with the mechanical limbs full force. A terrible shriek came from the Nietzschean woman, and then abruptly cut off when the armor bent and then crumpled inward. Shots were ricocheting off the rock around Rika, and she gauged the distance to the closest enemy before she heaved the dead Neat's body through the air toward the shooters. The weapon's fire shifted from Rika to the sailing corpse, and she took advantage of the distraction to move in the opposite direction, dashing toward the next enemy position, which was behind a small hillock on the side of the ridge. As she ran, a shot hit her thigh and tore into the flesh below her hip. Damn, I'm taking a licking out here. Ignoring the pain, Rika fired projectile rounds from her GNR at full auto, spraying over 40 rounds into the space behind the hillock before she reached its cover. The remains of two neats in light armor waited for her, and Rika slid to the ground beside them while looking herself over. Sure enough, her left thigh had lost its ablative plating at some point in the exchange. Luckily, the round that had found her flesh, after penetrating her base armor layer and her skin, had done little damage. 
she fished the round out while checking the rest of herself over. Roughly half the ablative plating on her body was either gone or cracked. Her stealth capabilities were ruined, and even if she were to pull off all the plates, the underlayer was scored in a dozen places and read only 60% stealth capable. After taking a moment to mentally berate herself for getting caught out in the open like that, Rika checked the combat net to see that Silva and Vi were facing heavier opposition, though were still holding their position. No possibility of backup there. The platoon's combat net didn't give her much hope for help from the squishies either. The neats were hitting the airstrip from every side. The freighter that Vi had come down on earlier in the day was a smoking ruin though a pair of GAF light assault shuttles were strafing the enemy lines, trying to slow their advance. Nothing for it, Rika. You're going to have to mop this up solo. Though her original estimate had gauged there to be six enemies attacking her, and she'd killed four, she was still able to pick out four different weapons firing at her cover, slowly wearing down the mound of dirt she was hiding behind. Cursing herself for not bringing grenades for Vi to practice with, Rika brought her drones in low, trying to improve her visual of the enemies as she flipped onto her back, scanning the terrain around her. The overhead view confirmed her amended estimation of four opponents, though they were all still stealthed. Shit, if those chuckleheads have stealth but aren't advancing, I'm probably being flanked. Just then, a grenade landed at her feet, and Rika immediately flipped one of the dead Nietzscheans onto it, placing a foot on the man's torso to keep his body from flying out at her. The explosion came a second later, and the force shoved the body, and by extension Rika, half a meter up the hillock. It also blasted fire, smoke, and dirt in the opposite direction. Eddies of smoke and dust outlined two approaching figures, and Rika fired an electron beam at one while unslinging her AR-97 and unloading an entire magazine on the other. The enemies were armored enough to weather the attack, and Rika felt raw fear tear through her, something she didn't often feel in combat, as both of them fired electron beams back at her. One beam hit her left arm in a place with no armor left and burned a hole right through her bicep. The other blast hit her square in the chest, and she grunted as forks of lightning cascaded all around her. A reading on Rika's HUD alerted that one of her SC batteries was compromised, and she was down to half power. Following that, her right leg started to spasm, and then fell still. The pair of heavily armored Nietzscheans approached, neither firing further, and Rika wondered why they weren't finishing her off. Shit, they want to capture me, like they did with those K1Rs we fought back in the Parson system. The women of Team Hammerfall had one agreement between them, which they had all settled on with no debate. Death before capture. Of course, the Genevian discipline system in her head wouldn't let her kill herself with something as simple as a battery overload. The approaching enemies were only four meters away, and Rika was casting about for some way to end her life. Then her eyes settled on a satchel lying near the body to her left. The flap was partially open, and there at the top rested a grenade. Not for the first time, she grudgingly thanked the factory for making her into a machine. A squishy that had just had an electron beam burn a hole through their arm would not be able to do what she was about to. Sitting up and groaning aloud, Rika tried to rise to her feet, but stumbled and fell forward to the laughter of the two Nietzscheans. Well, little robot girl, looks like you're not so tough after all. One of them growled as he reached down and grabbed Rika by the neck, lifting her into the air. We're gonna get a hell of a bounty for catching a scout model the other said as he approached and looked Rika over. You know, I'd totally fuck one of these. Idiot, the first neat growled. Bitch would probably rip your dick off. Not gonna be a problem for you, Rika said through her armor's audible systems, wishing she still had a mouth so she could give the man a cold grin. Not that he'd be able to see it beneath her helmet. It would have given her a grim sense of satisfaction, though. What? The man grunted and then watched as Rika shoved a thermite grenade behind an armor plate at his waist that her shots had loosened. She pushed down with all her might, wedging it under his ablative plating. With a wordless scream, the neat let go of her and tried to claw the grenade out, but she'd pushed it down deep, 
and his thickly gauntleted hands couldn't prize it free. She scrambled backward, laughing as the grenade detonated with a dull wump, the plating containing the blast. The Nietzschean fell to the ground, screaming as the thermite began to burn away his midsection. The other enemy stood staring at his comrade in dumbfounded horror, so Rika took the opportunity to fire an electron beam right under his chin where his helmet seated against the neck ring. Bolts of energy arced around them, a few hitting Rika, further damaging her, but she didn't care. She fired her beam again, burning a hole right through the man's head. Neither of her twitching legs were working anymore, but she knew there were still four more neats on the other side of the hillock. Any moment now, they were going to start shooting again. She flipped open the satchel and saw that there were four more thermite grenades. Maybe there is a god for mechs, she thought, while pulling herself up into a seated position. Ignoring the pain, Rika threw the four grenades in rapid succession, each one arcing gracefully through the air. Then, timing her shots carefully, she fired four rounds from her GNR, hitting each of the grenades, causing them to explode above their targets. Screams echoed across the hillside, and she pulled herself to the top of the small hillock to see two neats run out from cover, pulling their armor off as it smoked and burned. Not caring that it would be flagged as a waste of ammunition, she fired a depleted uranium rod at each one. The shots tore holes in each of the neats' torsos, dropping them like flies. Now, where are those other two assholes? She wondered. Rika? Silva's voice came into her mind. You okay? Hell of a lot of EM over there. I can barely get shit, and your armor reads as totally hosed. I noticed that too, Rika replied with a weary laugh. I just have two more asshats over here. How are you doing? A fucking second tune showed up on the other side of the valley. But I think they're holding off till your flankers reach us. Not going to happen, Rika replied, sliding back down behind the hillock while releasing another pair of drones, her prior set having been taken out in one of the EM surges from the electron beams. I'm gonna send Vi to help you, Silva said in response. You're shot to shit. No, you need her for covering fire, Rika protested. You can't hold a fucking platoon back on your own. I've called in Starfire. It'll be here any moment. You trust the fleet to send down Starfire to save meat? Rika scoffed. If I fall, the airstrip falls. They'll send it to save the squishies at our backs. Rika couldn't fault Silva's logic. But she wasn't going to sit still and wait for Vi to save her. More likely, she'll end up getting shot up, and I'll have to save her, she thought with a laugh. Her drones weren't able to pick up any movement, which she knew meant that the last two neats, providing there weren't even more out there, were also in stealth. Par for the course. A quick look around showed Rika that there were no more grenades to be had, but then her eyes settled on the electron beam rifles that the pair of heavies had held. She scrambled over to one and picked it up, careful not to touch the grip, as that would trigger an auth check and blast her hand off. Instead, she grabbed a breech tab from a compartment on her left arm and slotted it in next to where the weapon's charge battery sat. An indicator lit up on her HUD, showing that the tab had successfully tapped the battery, and she repeated the process on the other weapon. By some miracle, no enemies had approached as she sabotaged the weapons, but that just solidified the notion that they were trying to get into good firing positions while in stealth. The stretch of hillside behind the hillock offered little cover. The two best approaches for the enemy were right behind her, or around the boulder where she'd killed the first of the neats after they'd ambushed her. Without further perseveration, Rika set one of the rifles to overload and tossed it into the air toward the boulder, her arms screaming in agony as she made the throw, and then lobbed the other over the hillock. Both weapons exploded at the same time, and Rika watched for any signs of the stealth neats from her overhead drones, which she'd pulled up high enough not to get hit by the EM bursts. A second later, a figure appeared just on the other side of the hillock, staggering backward as their stealth failed. Well, well, well. Rika thought, as she pushed herself up onto her knees and fired a trio of projectile shots at the enemy soldier. She knew it was a risk that the other attacker, wherever he was, would get a clear line of sight on her, but she warranted that evening out the odds was worth it. The rounds knocked the man down, 
And then Rika's drones caught motion directly across from her cover as the last neat eased around a boulder on the far side of the space where she'd been ambushed. He carried a shoulder-fired rocket and was taking careful aim at her. Rika fired another series of projectile rounds at the man, or she tried to. Nothing happened. Glancing down, she saw that the string of rounds from the ammo box at her hip had torn free from her GNR. She was out of sabot rounds, and her bats were running perilously low, ruling out an electron beam. In the time it took Rika to consider her non-options, the rocket leaped from the launcher. Rika backpedaled, knowing that the already battered hillock would not be enough to protect her, especially if the rocket was firing overhead, timed to air burst above its target. Then the rocket exploded. For a moment, Rika thought she was dead. She had to be. But then realization hit her. The rocket had exploded ten meters away. She stared dumbfounded at the Nietzschean as he pulled the launcher off his shoulder and looked at it. Then back up at Rika. For a moment, neither moved just continued gazing at one another across the 200-meter clearing. Then the Nietzschean's head exploded. Well, if you're gonna make it that easy for me, buddy. Vi's welcome voice came over the link, and Rika collapsed to the ground, gasping for air as she realized she'd not drawn breath for nearly a minute. Vi, stars, thanks. She saw the SMI-2 approaching through the gloom and shook her head. You've got a lot of swagger for your first day there, newbie. Check the kill counts on the combat net, Vi replied with a laugh. Rika pulled up the combat net and saw that Vi had bagged eight Nietzscheans. Not bad for your first day, girl, she commended, checking her drone feeds to be sure there were no more surprises coming their way. Granted, I got 11 my first time out. I thought you mentioned earlier this wasn't a competition, Vi said as she approached. Damn, you look like shit, Rika. Feel like it too. And yeah, target practice isn't a competition. But kill counts in the field? Totally. Vi cocked her head. I feel like it should be the other way around. Rika extended her left arm, and the other mech clasped it, pulling her upright. Welcome to Team Hammerfall, Vi. We do things differently here. I can tell, she replied, then slid her arm around Rika. You're a bit wobbly there. Yeah, actuators and my legs are fried. Let me get my knees straight so the locking pins. There. Okay, now I can hobble along. Vi shook her head. Shit, Rika. You're one hardcore woman. Rika let out a long sigh at the thought. She used to say the same thing about Kelly. I guess I'm the jaded veteran in the group now. She took five sapet rounds from Vi and hooked her ammo box's feed back up to her weapon before they got on the move. Three long minutes later, they reached the ridge's military crest and then crawled the rest of the way up to the top, peering over at the weapon's fire pouring across the valley at Silva's position. The boulder the corporal was using for cover was half gone, and Rika realized that the woman was only minutes away from being destroyed by the barrage. Shit, Silva, is that starfire still coming? Beats me she said, and Rika started, realizing that the woman's signal was only coming from a hundred meters away along the ridge. Shit, Corporal Silva, how are you? Set up my rifle to fire on auto, though I think it's out now, Silva replied. You two ready to hit those bastards in the face? Hell yeah, Vi said while Rika only groaned. Still, she brought her GNR around and got ready to fire a series of sabot rounds on the closest targets. Vi, get down the ridge, past Rika. We, oh, hold one mic. A glow illuminated the sky as ranging beams shone down from above. The lasers burned away the clouds, and then brilliant energy beams slammed into the Nietzscheans, shredding their ranks and lighting the hillside on fire. Seconds later, more starfire hit positions behind the three mechs, striking the west side of the airstrip, then again on the north. Why don't they just do that right at the outset? Vi asked as she rolled onto her back, out of sight of the raging fire that was spreading from the enemy's former position. Fucked if I know, Rika replied. Maybe there was a Nietzschean ship nearby, or the flyboys were all on the shitter or something. It's only been 11 minutes, Silva reminded them.
The shit was on the far side of the planet. Rika laughed. <laughs> Slackers. Then she groaned as she realized how much she heard everywhere. You know, Rika, you need to be more careful, Silva said with a laugh. <laughs> Don't worry, though. Before the shit hit, I got an update that we're going to get a fourth girl on Hammerfall in a day or two. Finally get back up to full strength. Rika groaned as she pushed herself into a sitting position. Well, getting back to full strength might take more than a day or two on my part. My aches have aches. Vi rose and offered her a hand. Well, let's get you back to the airstrip, old woman. I'll help you swap out your legs. <laughs> Can you get me a whole new body while you're at it? Rika asked with a soft laugh, careful not to breathe too deeply. Make it snappy, Silva said from her position. Gunny wants us to spend the night out here scouring the hills for any strays. Rika stifled a groan and lifted her arm over Vi's shoulder. Well, Vi, let's get a move on. Squishies need us to keep them safe. Grab me some nades too, Rika. They would have really come in handy, Silva called after. Rika gave the corporal a one-gun salute, and with that, the two women walked off through the darkness. Glancing at the FNM by her side, Rika's cheeks twitched in her approximation of a smile. She hoped Vi would last. She hoped they all would last.